Hello everyone, my name is Eric Jones, better known as the Turf Teacher. Welcome to the course entitled Pesticides in the Environment. This information comes directly from Chapter 7 in your North Carolina Pesticide Applicator Certification Core Manual. So let's get started with our course objectives. We're going to distinguish between toxicity, exposure, and hazard. We're going to know the difference between acute and chronic toxicity. We're going to know the common ways pesticides enter our bodies. We're going to understand contact versus systemic, reversible, versus irreversible, immediate versus delayed, and allergic effects from pesticide exposure. We're also going to recognize symptoms of pesticide exposure and of heat stress and how the appropriate first aid response needs to be treated for both. And so guys, I highly recommend if you're a landscape contractor, if you're a horticulture professional, pesticide applicator, definitely learn basic CPR and first aid. We're exposed every single day, not only to chemicals, but equipment that is dangerous. We're exposed to environmental conditions such as heat and cold that we need to all of us, really. Take the Saturday afternoon class, become CPR certified, get the basic uh, first aid class as well so we know exactly what to do when there is an emergency. I highly recommend it. I know the, the North Carolina Landscape Contractors Board offers CEUs. They count your CPR uh, class as like two business hours, I believe, but uh, we're not going to get into that. But guys, just know that it is very important uh, to know CPR and first aid in the green industry because we're exposed to so much, to so much every single day. Um, 90 degree days, guys, you know, are we drinking enough water? Are we exposed and, and developing heat exhaustion, heat stress, and, and hopefully never a heat stroke, guys. And then, you know, with the dangerous equipment that we're working, we really need um, to know it, guys. So toxicity and poison. A poison is a substance that can cause harm, illness, or death through ingestion, inhalation, or absorption. So we can actually get it in our mouth, swallow it, and it's inside of our body. We can breathe it in, it's inside our lungs, or we can get it on our skin and it absorbs into our body. Now that is a poison, guys, a poison that can cause that harm and illness through those three uh, entry points to our body. And toxicity is how poisonous the substance is. There are some substances, guys, that are highly toxic that we apply as pesticide applicators. Not every day do we uh, have that chance or opportunity to spray such a high toxic um, pesticide. But, you know, in your careers, I'm sure there's going to be instances where you're like, oh my goodness, I'm really having to wear all this PPE. Yes, if you're doing insecticides and even some of the um, fungicides, guys, require that you, you know, wear more than you're actually used to every day as a lawn care technician or horticulture professional. Exposure and dose. Exposure is when a pesticide gets onto or into the body. That is your exposure. Um, when it happens inside or outside the body. Your dose is how much of that pesticide or chemical actually enters into the body. So that is your quantity. How much uh, was it the entire concentrated bottle that you spilled on your legs when mixing or loading? Or was it a teaspoon that splashed up into your mouth and you got scared and you swallowed and how much actually got into the body. Kind of scary when you start thinking about actually swallowing or breathing in some of these pesticides. But hazard, hazard is equivalent to toxicity times exposure. And hazard, guys, is, is the risk. It is the potential for, for injury. So nothing's happened yet, it's just the potential. So how hazardous is it? Well, that is equivalent to the toxicity of the product, the capacity of the pesticide to cause injury how bad and then exposure the risk of a pesticide contacting or entering the body how much is it of that pesticide that is dangerous but toxicity times exposure is your hazard uh, equation now this isn't a math problem this is just a definition of what hazard means ladies and gentlemen Exposure. Mixing and loading are the greatest hazard because of exposure to the concentrated pesticide. Yes. Now, you might be climbing up in the back of your truck or on top of your tractor uh, and you're actually having to pour in the two and a half gallon jug 
of the chemical into the large sprayer. And when doing this, you're at more risk because the concentrate is there. And so when you read the label, as stated in the next line here, um, you may have to wear more PPE when mixing and loading than you do actually applying the pesticide. So make sure you read that label. You have to follow the label. Now on larger sites like that, you're probably more likely to get visited by a pesticide inspector. If you're on a large farm or if you're on a large commercial property and you're applying large amounts of pesticide, they're, they're probably going to drive by and see that happening. And so they may want to stop. Guys, you need to have that PP on that's stated on the label for mixing and loading and then remove some of that if you don't have to wear it all when you're actually applying the pesticide but guys have have all the ppe needed especially mixing and loading this is where individuals get really really sick and really really hurt uh, at this point in addition to protecting yourself guys you're also protecting the environment like other people wildlife and and pets and so do the right thing have a spill kit next to you at these mixed load sites in case you do have an accident have a way that you can clean the spill up really really quick and then notify the authorities that you did uh, have a pesticide leak um, acute versus chronic acute is how poisonous a substance is after a single exposure or a very few closely related uh, spaced out exposure. So uh, this is, you've applied a chemical one time, you got really sick from it, or you got really, really ill from it. That is an acute exposure. Chronic is how poisonous the substance is after multiple exposures and low doses over longer periods of time. Now this might be you're applying a chemical, you know, your entire career, you know, you've built up, um, some of that chemical in your body, yes. I mean, and you've, you're getting sick from it from years of exposure. And I always used to joke with uh, prior students about going to the doctor and getting a blood test and they're saying, oh, your blood's like 10% glyphosate from so much Roundup that we've sprayed. I say that jokingly, but guys, this could happen with any pesticide. It didn't happen to me, it was a joke, um, but repeated applications and not wearing the proper PPE because we all make that mistake. We do, you know, always listen to me uh, when doing this because guys, I've, I've sprayed Roundup um, in short sleeve shirts. I've sprayed Roundup with shorts on. I've made the mistake of putting the blue tracker dye in the back of the backpack and having a white t-shirt on and it shows you exactly where all that spills are. And then your back itches and it gets tight and it's almost like a sunburn where uh, the product in the tank it's kind of splashed out and actually soaked my t-shirt and then had my back exposed uh, to it guys we do it all the time i should have been wearing a tyvek suit so l listen to what i say not what i do sometimes and it really needs to be the other round watch what i say because i really need to do more precautions than I do, but I'm not actively spraying every single day like our crews are. So please, please just follow the PPE for the label of the pesticide you're applying and you'll be fine. Routes of exposure, you can get it through your skin, eyes, mouth, nose, and lungs. So, you know, skin is, um, you know, on your hands, guys, that is probably one of the most dangerous spots and you won't believe how many times we touch our face uh, an hour it's unbelievable how many hundreds of times or even thousands of times a day that we you know we just reach up and, and do that if we've got pesticides on our hand and we go to our face we can get it in our eyes we can get it in our mouth um, and it's just it can be a, a nasty situation and a lot of the times um, with even with this ingestion technicians will stop and take lunch and they don't thoroughly wash their hands and they may have some pesticide residue or even the concentrate on their hand from mixing or loading and they go to eat and boom they've got it in their mouth and they've got it ingested into their body another thing tobacco product users whether it be dip or cigarette dip would be oral because there's pesticide on their fingers and they're putting it in their mouth if you're also a smoker and you light up a cigarette and you've got pesticides on your hands and a little bit of the paper of the cigarette gets wet, you could be breathing in some of those um, 
fumes from the pesticide that gets on the cigarette. So guys, you gotta be careful with everything that you do when applying these chemicals. Um, skin exposure, again, 97% of the body exposure is through the skin. Look at this picture here. This is a picture from pesticide, pest, uh, pesticidepicks.org. The, the light colored, the white, is actually pesticide residue on the palms. That is where we get a lot of our exposure, guys, because we're handling it all the time. Wear the rubber gloves. I know it's hot and you're gonna sweat and sweat's gonna collect then in the fingertips, but you have to wear these gloves to protect that. Because next thing you know, what is that applicator gonna do? They're gonna, they're gonna do this, they're gonna wipe their face, they're gonna light a cigarette, they're gonna take a swig of uh, Gatorade because it's hot, they might eat some nabs or something, and they're, that pesticide's going right to their mouth. Warm, moist areas absorb more than the cooler, drier areas. Just because it's wet and it's warm, it's going to stick to it. And if you look at the graph on page 102, the human there, it's talking about the percentage of insecticide absorbed over 24 hours by different areas of the skin. Some areas absorb more than others. You know, scalp, 32%. Foreheads, you know, 36 Ear canal, 46 So that's actually getting more than the, than the forehead. The abdomen, 18.4. So you spill a big spill on your abdomen. It can, you know, 18% there. Forearm, 8.6. The genitalia area will absorb 100% of the material. One, because it's, used, it's where we sweat the most and it's the core temperature of our body. It's gonna be warmer there. So it's gonna absorb 100% of uh, the chemical. Your palm, 11.8. But even though our palms are always exposed. But again, the worst thing about that is the wiping of the face, not washing our hands and going to lunch. Guys, protect yourself, protect yourself, and protect your family because you're going home with this stuff on you. Um, we just talked about that, you know, the scalp, the forehead, ear canal, abdomen, uh, and the forearm, and now look at this hand here, pesticide exposure to these palms. That's a burn, that's gonna hurt. Guys, and you won't think, you know, it's harder for any type of injury to heal on our hands and our feet because we use them. We use them at everything we do. Our hands and feet, our feet walk us. So if our feet get burnt or they get injured, it kind of you know, sets us back a few weeks, right? And what about the hands? If you can't pick up or do anything, you can't really do anything. A cut on the arm and stuff is going to heal, but a cut on, the, on your Hand, it takes a lot longer to heal just because of the movement that's always happening with our hands. Protection, guys, PPE, eye exposure. Pesticides that splash into your eyes may be absorbed directly into your bloodstream, whoa, through the blood vessels close to the surface of the eye. Plus, your vision's the most important thing that you got, guys. You definitely don't wanna lose vision because of a mistake that you made or that your employer may call your employer out if the proper PPE isn't provided for you. Results may include eye damage, blindness, or even death. And eyes can absorb surprisingly large amounts of the chemical. And an eye burn is nasty, nasty. Mouth exposure, swallowed pesticides may cause illness, injury, or death. The intestines rapidly absorb pesticides, so make sure to thoroughly wash your hands and face. Again, you're applying chemicals and you go to eat. What's happening? Oral exposure is common in children where pesticides, especially rodent bait, have been stored in unlabeled containers, especially food containers. What in the world are people thinking? Guys, you have to store the pesticide in its original container and it must be locked away. Just think about all the dangerous chemicals underneath the kitchen sink. And that's where little children get hurt at home and parents actually get in trouble when they don't do that but all the the cleaning supplies and that rodent bait for mice and for cockroaches any of that stuff and what it is usually that stuff's colorful it's attractive to look at so the kids eyes go right to it and what's the what's the kid want to do first thing when they pick up something it goes right to their mouth same thing with our pets everything goes right to their mouth First, guys, protect them, lock it up. Inhalation exposure. Inhaled chemicals can cause damage to the nose, throat, and lungs. Inhalation of pesticides can cause systemic illness from entering the bloodstream quickly. And 
completely. Avoid it. Wear the proper PPE, whether it's a dust mask, a respirator uh, that you change the filters, or if you're uh, doing a self, uh, like a scuba type system, self-contained breathing apparatus, wear it. Do what the label says. But luckily, if you're in the turf grass industry, a lot of this stuff you may not be exposed to every day. You may have a special crew that does some of the more dangerous chemicals, but you know your typical lawn care technician, hopefully you're not having to do most of that. Individuals that are applying pesticides in greenhouses and nurseries are probably gonna have the chance of being exposed to more dangerous or hazardous pesticides than uh, our turf grass professionals. And for one, you're in an enclosed environment, that makes it even worse. Um, but some harmful effects, toxic effects, all right? So what is a contact effect? It uh, takes place at the site of exposure, you, you, the contact. It comes in contact with you, so it's at the site of exposure. Uh, you're gonna get irritation, itching, redness, a rash, blisters, burns, swelling, stinging, burning again, uh, sneezing, and respiratory damage. So not, not good stuff here. Systemic, occurs in areas of the body away from the exposure site. Um, so it kind of, it uptakes through the body. And that's going to cause nauseous, vomiting, cramps, headache, dizziness, confusion, chest pains, difficulty breathing, sweating, chills, body aches, and muscle cramps. Now, um, we used to uh, spray a broadleaf herbicide on our properties, and I did a lot of that back in my mid to late 20s, early 30s, uh, did quite a bit of lawn care applications. And the broadleaf herbicide that we use, I'm not gonna say it because I love, love the product, it works so well. But by the end of the day, spraying it, if I didn't wear a mask, uh, like a respirator, you know, I always wore the minimum PPE, but I knew that I was more susceptible to it. You know, there's just certain things you're gonna bother certain people uh, when, when they're exposed to some of these pesticides. We'd have guys that would spray it all day and not affect them. But when I would spray our broadleaf herbicide all day, even half the day, I would get an enormous headache. And I noticed when I wore a mask, a respirator, didn't happen. The product didn't call for it on the label to wear the respirator, but when I did wear the respirator, I didn't get a headache. So it was telling me, Eric, you need to take further precautions because it was a nasty headache to get rid of. Um, and so I was breathing in where it was volatizing and just the smell of it was, was, was horrible, but it worked great. But just smelling it give you such a nasty headache. Uh, immediate effects uh, are experienced upon a exposure similar to contact effects and including loss of consciousness and possibly death. Um, Delayed, effects arising weeks to years after exposure, uh, tumors, gene mutations, reproductive effects, infertility, miscarriage, stillbirths, uh, and birth defects, all stuff that we don't want to happen to our precious children. And then disorders of the blood, nerves, brain, skin, lungs, liver, and kidneys. And um, who knows, you know, uh, I had an issue of my blood clotting where I was developing clots over and over again. We couldn't figure it out. Was it maybe from pesticide exposure uh, my, in my younger careers? Who knows? Uh, they've done every type of test and we can't find that out. So guys, just do the precautions. Um, I know you may not think it's that necessary. Oh, hey, I'm gonna spray you know, this garden or my greenhouse this one time. I'll be all right. I don't need to go spend the money on the PPE. Guys, it's not worth losing your life or getting sick from it later in life. Allergic effects. Some people have reactions to pesticides that not everyone experiences. You know, maybe my headache from the broadleaf herbicide. Allergic reactions are thought to happen after multiple exposures. May include red or itchy eyes, um, problems with the skin, uh, with blisters, hives, asthma, even breathing difficulty, or even life-threatening shock. You could go into... Uh, a type of shock, guys, that could really um, mess you up. I mean, there you're needing immediate attention from, from you know, 911 paramedics. Um, signs and symptoms. Symptoms are reactions being experienced. Signs is evidence of the poison itself. 
So what are your symptoms having? You know, what is it that you are experiencing? Signs would be evidence of the poison. Oh, you know, there's an empty bottle. So you walk up on a technician that's kind of fell over. Uh, the symptom is they're passed out. Signs is there's an empty container of that pesticide. But you want to, uh, hopefully, your victims are conscious before it happens. Symptoms and signs are similar to the flu uh, or a hangover, but if you have been using pesticides, call the poison center. Have this number wrote down. You know, I always recommend to have a notebook in the truck. And I know, yes, as technologically advanced as I think I am, I still want that three ring binder with my pesticide label that I can print off the internet the MSDS sheets, and then all pertinent information, which is the labeling from my vendors and the ag agents and the, the manufacturers of the product. I want all that information in a three ring binder. And then tab it. You know, if you've got, if you're spraying a broadleaf herbicide on your turf, have it in there. If you've got insecticide on the truck that you're doing some application for, have a tab for that. So you can tab right to that chemical, but on the front of it, guys, you need to have uh, the Poison Control Center number. Write this down, 1-800-222-1222. Have that programmed in your cell phone. Have that in the trucks where your guys can always have access to it. Get medical advice if you or others develop unexplained symptoms or signs within 24 hours of working with pesticides. Don't let it go, guys. If you get sick, call. Call 911, call the Poison Control Center, and get to a hospital. It's better to be safe than sorry. Be able to tell the doctor the Pacific pesticide. Grab that book. If you're sick, grab the book. Take it with you. Take the label and all other MSDA sheets to the doctor. The symptoms may be from common illness or exposure to certain plants, but always seek medical attention immediately if symptoms appear after contact or exposure to a pesticide. First aid, stop the exposure as quickly as possible. So you see somebody fall in a field, they're spraying a chemical, turn the machine off. You don't need to enter uh, the site until the, the machine's turned off, the sprayer's turned off, and that you get the proper PPE, guys. It's kind of like, you know, there's no medicine in a gunfight. You know, you have to stop the gunfight before you can treat your other fellow soldiers and Marines. Same thing with lawn care technicians. You can't danger yourself. Stop the exposure. Get your PP on, PPE on and then go to the site. And the same thing with, you know, doing plastic culture and, and fumigating underneath the, uh, the plastic. You have to have two people uh, on site with some of these gases that they fumigate with already suited up. You've got the technician in the field suited up, actually driving the tractor, doing the fumigation under the plastic. And then you've got to have somebody suited up in case that person has a leak in their suit, rips it, their mask malfunctions, that they can run out there and get the person. So um, you, you need to have that, make sure that you're protecting yourself before you can help the others, guys. Um, before calling for help, make sure the victim is breathing and not being exposed any further, you know, uh, and then pour, perform CPR if they're not breathing. Know your CPR, know your basic first aid, guys. And then hopefully you're not by yourself when doing these very, very hazardous uh, pesticides. First aid for skin, look, you know, got the rash that we're talking about on palms, on the back of our neck. You know, guys, we get a little bit on our hand and it's, it's hot, we're wiping the sweat away. Boom, you've just got it all over you if you're not wearing your glove. The good thing about wearing those rubber gloves, you don't want them near your face. So when you pull it up, you're like, oh, no. It reminds you, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with pesticides. But first aid for skin exposure. Remove the contaminated PPE and clothing immediately. Rinse thoroughly with water. Immersion uh, is best. Dip them in it. Wash all exposed areas with soap. Avoid scrubbing. And then gently dry or gently wrap with the cloth. Now, I actually took a continuing education class. Uh, it's been, I don't know, within the past couple of years. But I remember um, the lady uh, talking about it. She was from um, rural part, not from North Carolina. They had moved here to North Carolina, but they was in a rural area and where they did a lot of aerial pesticide applications. 
and she was in her kitchen and uh, she'd heard the, the plane going around, you know, spraying the, the neighboring farm, spraying the, the chemicals. And she saw the plane actually start to land. And she was looking out the kitchen. She saw the, the plane land. She saw the guy running towards her house, stripping off his clothes. And she's like, whoa, I know what's happening here because she, you know, a pesticide uh, uh, ag agent herself was talking about this guy running towards her house, stripping his clothes off. And he runs immediate to a garden hose and starts drenching himself, rinsing himself. What had happened inside the plane, one of the hoses broke loose and it got the pesticide all in the cab, the cockpit of the plane, and it covered him head to toe. So he landed immediately, stripped down, ran to it. She calls 911 and was actually, you know, going out there to start helping him and seeing what he needed to, and actually find out what the chemical was. So guys, this is dangerous stuff. And so he was totally exposed, his whole body, and this just reminded me of removing the contaminated clothing and the PPE that he had on inside the cockpit. First aid for getting it in your eyes. Uh, immediately rinse the eyes with water. Tilt the head up and hold eyelid open and drip water across the eye so it runs outward or use an eye wash dispenser. Now, you know that uh, the worker protection standard, the WPS, requires that um, any of these workers have they they will need immediate access uh to a uh, eye wash station and they they have mobile mounts on trucks you know with the bottles that can flush the eyes immediately rinse for 15 minutes flush under the eyelids to remove any debris and then cover the eyes with clean cough and then seek medical attention um, first aid for inhalation exposure i mean look at these poor guys out here you know at least uh, the farmer here um, is wearing a respirator, but these guys aren't doing anything. Carry the victim to fresh air and ha have them lie down. Um, but if they're having trouble breathing, they're going to want to sit up. Let them sit up. Uh, because of the, the worst feeling in the world is that feeling of not being able to breathe. And so they're going to want to kind of hunch over uh, if they're not able to breathe. Warn others of the danger, keep the victim warm and calm. If convulsing, protect the head and keep the chin up and then perform CPR if the uh, victim stops breathing. First aid in the mouth, I love this picture. Got the whole tank. If swallowed, only induce vomiting if the label says so. Read that label, it'll tell you what your exposures are. It may cause more harm than good with some pesticides. Never induce vomiting if the victim is unconscious, convulsing, swallowed a corrosive poison, or emulsifiable concentrate, or an oil solution. It's better to, to leave it there. Rinse the mouth with water, and then drink up to a quart of milk or water. Antidotes. They are a practical treatment that can counteract uh, the poison. They're only available in a few classes of pesticides, but never use them as a prevention. Heat stress. We don't think about this. We really don't. Um, and, and one thing that the Army taught me was you've got to protect your soldiers from the heat. Mandatory water breaks. I mean, drink water. You know, I don't know how many times we heard that uh, throughout my career. Um, and we'd even carry ice sheets. We would carry coolers full of ice water that we would keep bed sheets in in case a soldier got too hot, would pull that ice sheet out, would wrap around it uh, and cool them down because that is it, heat stress, heat stroke, guys, is very, very dangerous. Um, wearing the PPE that we have to, because the label says so, makes us at a greater risk for the heat stress. I mean, it just increases our body temperatures. Symptoms of heat stress can be fatigue, dizziness, even fainting, uh, clammy or hot, dry skin. Very, very serious. Uh, you can also have confusion, slurred speech, uh, irritated or irrational behavior. Yeah, guys, when you get hot and you get stressed out, uh, you're, you're gonna get irritated. You could get the headache, nausea, chills. That is the worst feeling in the world when it is 98 degrees and you're freezing. That means you're, you're, you're having a heat stress situation and it could progress further into a heat stroke. Cool off, get into the area, get in the shade and cool down and drink water. You could have severe thirst, dry mouth, and then heavy 
or lack of sweating. When, when you stop sweating, guys, it's, it's, it's almost too late. Uh, so again, move to that uh, shaded or cool area, remove any PPE causing excessive heat, cool down by splashing or even immersion in water, drink cool water if conscious, and remain still and calm until the help arrives. Heat cramps. Painful muscle spasms from loss of salts caused by heavy sweating. Drink a sports drink to replenish the salts or electrolytes and then rest in a cool place for several hours. Uh, hours. And just a uh, label of something. But, you know, Gatorade, um, Powerade, any of that stuff. Or anything that's got those electrolytes that we lose uh, while working outside. Heat stroke. Guys, call 911 immediately. Follow the first aid for heat stress previously discussed. Um, but you're going to see like with heat stroke, they're not going to be sweating. Uh, they've already stopped sweating and, um, very, very, um, kind of out of their mind. Guys, this is a dangerous uh, situation. And guys, I know this is off topic, but you know, heat stroke can happen to our family pets. So bring them in inside on these hot, 98 degree, 100 day, 100 degree days. They don't deserve to be out there too. They're they're going to drink their water and they're going to run out. Dogs drink water continuously, um, but bring them inside when it gets that hot because they're very susceptible to uh, heat stress and strokes as well. Um, here's the difference really between a heat stroke and symptoms. Uh, let's look at heat exhaustion first. Faint or dizzy, headache, profuse sweating, irritability, weak, rapid pulse. So guys, again, take a take a first aid test be able to check somebody's pulse be able to do take their um, um hmm. oh my goodness and and being a medic in the army of totally um vital signs be able to take somebody's vital signs um see if they've got shallow breathing you know they're gonna have pale cool clammy uh, skin they're gonna have nauseous and maybe vomiting and then they're gonna have muscle cramps the treatment had the victim lie down in a cool shaded area or air conditioned area Drink water if they're conscious, and then use caution when victim stands up, apply cold presses. Uh, symptoms of a heat stroke, absence of the sweating, like I mentioned before, a pulsating headache, hot, red, dry skin, high body temperature, usually above 103, nauseous or vomiting, strong, rapid pulse, confusion, convulsions, and may lose consciousness. Treatment, die, dial 911. Guys, the only thing that they really need here is high flow diesel fuel. And I'm not saying, by drinking that, I'm talking about the ambulance, high flow diesel fuel, hitting the gas on the, the paramedic truck and getting them to a hospital. Um, take action to cool the victim by any means, place victims in cool area, wrap in a wet towel, uh, sponge the victim with cool water. This is very, very dangerous and you do not want um, a coworker or family or um, friend to, to die with a heat stroke, especially because guys, this is, this is preventable. Uh, and, and that's the saddest thing. So, uh, but it happens every single year in the green industry. And this will conclude uh, chapter seven, guys, pesticide hazards and first aid. Uh, my name is Eric Jones. I'll see you in the next lecture. Thanks.